On your screen, you see one of the cover pages for the Northwoods documents. You will note that it is signed by L. L. Lemnitzer, dated March 13, 1962, and marked as unclassified. Next, you will note the subtitle of the Northwoods document is revealed as Justification for U.S. Military Intervention in Cuba. Throughout the process of looking at these pages, you will notice that I have also highlighted the text of particular interest. Now, let's read these parts of the documents for ourselves. The Problem As requested by Chief of Operations Cuba Project, the Joint Chiefs of Staff are to indicate brief but precise description of pretexts, which they consider would provide justification for U.S. military intervention in Cuba. The suggested course of action appended to Enclosure A are based on the premise that U.S. military intervention will result from a period of heightened U.S.-Cuban tensions, which place the United States in the position of suffering justifiable grievances. World opinion and the United Nations Forum should be favorably affected by developing the international image of the Cuban government as rash and irresponsible, and as an alarming and unpredictable threat to the peace of the Western Hemisphere. Uh, recommendations of the Northwoods documents were to include that this paper not be forwarded to commander of unified or specific commands. This paper not be forwarded to U.S. officers assigned to NATO activities. This paper not be forwarded to the chairman, U.S. delegation, United Nations Military Staff Committee. So clearly, um, they were trying to keep this very secret, uh, and they didn't want anyone to know about it, and understandably so, because this entire document is quite embarrassing. This plan, incorporating projects selected from the attached suggestions or from other sources should be developed to focus all efforts on a specific ultimate objective which would provide adequate justification for U.S. military intervention. Such a plan would enable a logical buildup of incidents to be combined with other seemingly unrelated events to camouflage the ultimate objective and create the necessary impression of Cuban rashness and irresponsibility on a large scale directed at other countries as well as the United States. I don't think you have to be a conspiracy theorist to see what's going on here. Uh, I mean, they, they spell it out very plainly and simply for you. Uh, this indeed was a real conspiracy. The plan would also properly integrate and time phase the courses of action to be pursued. The desired resultant from the execution of this plan would be to place the United States in the apparent position of suffering defensible grievances from a rash and irresponsible government of Cuba and to develop an international image of a Cuban threat to peace in the Western Hemisphere. Now, here they go on to list some of the tactics which could be used in order to uh, bring this whole plan about. Um, let's read what they say here. Harassment plus deceptive actions to convince the Cubans of imminent invasion would be emphasized. See, that way they could get the, the Cubans to attack before we do. Um, our military posture throughout execution of the plan will allow a rapid change from exercise to intervention if Cuban response justifies. A series of well-coordinated incidents will be planned to take place in and around Guantanamo to give genuine appearance of being done by hostile Cuban forces. So here uh, they talk about attacking their own military base at Guantanamo Bay in order to let it appear that hostile Cuban forces did it. So. You know what this means is that they would either have to employ friendly Cubans to do this or they would have to uh, dress up as, as Cuban guerrillas and, and attack their own military base. Incidents to establish a credible attack, not in chronological order, are to start rumors 
or use clandestine radio. So they would stage radio communications in order to uh, make this more believable. Land friendly Cubans in uniform over the fence to stage an attack on the base. I'm talking about Guantanamo again. Capture Cuban saboteurs inside the base, ones that they sent in. Start riots near the base, near the main gate of the base. Blow up ammunition inside the base. Start fires. Burn aircraft on the air base. Lob mortar shells from outside of the base into the base. Some damage to installations. Sabotage ship in harbor. Large fires. If you think back to the 1999 attack of the USS Cole, reportedly by Osama bin Laden, who is a CIA asset, I think a lot of this is starting to show itself as tactics that are used fairly often. Sink ship near harbor entrance. Conduct funerals for mock victims. Commence large-scale United States military operations. We could blow up a drone vessel anywhere in the Cuban waters. We could arrange to cause such incidents in the vicinity of Havana or Santiago as a spectacular result of Cuban attack from the air or sea or both. The presence of Cuban planes or ships merely investigating the intent of the vessel could be fairly compelling evidence that the ship was taken under attack. The nearness to Havana or Santiago would add credibility especially to those people that might have heard the blast or have seen the fire. The U.S. could follow up with an air-sea rescue mission covered by U.S. fighters to evacuate remaining members of the non-existent crew. Casualty lists in the U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave of indignation. So here they're even talking about doing this stuff in order to fool the American public. You see how stupid they think we are? We could develop a communist Cuban terror campaign in the Miami area, in other Florida cities, and even in Washington. We could sink a boatload of Cubans en route to Florida, either real or simulated. So here they're even talking about they, they would even kill people. I mean, that's just insane. We could foster attempts on lives of Cuban refugees in the United States, even to the extent of wounding in instances to be widely publicized. So again, they're talking about even wounding or killing people so that the newspapers would pick up the story and run with it and the American public would be frightened and say, oh no, save us from the terrorists. Uh, let's go attack Cuba. You know, well, that's the way this works. Exploding a few plastic bombs in carefully chosen spots the arrest of Cuban agents and the release of prepared documents substantiating Cuban involvement also would be helpful in projecting the idea of an irresponsible government. It is possible to create an incident which will demonstrate convincingly that a Cuban aircraft has attacked and shot down a chartered civil airliner en route from the United States to Jamaica, Guatemala, Panama, or Venezuela. The destination would be chosen only to cause the flight plan route to cross Cuba. The passengers could be a group of college students off on a holiday or any grouping of persons with a common interest to support chartering a non-scheduled flight. An aircraft at Eglin Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft belonging to a CIA proprietary organization in the Miami area. At a designated time, the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with the selected passengers, all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft would be converted to a drone. Takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft will be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. From the rendezvous point, the passenger carrying aircraft will descend to minimum altitude and go directly into an auxiliary field at Eglund Air Force Base where arrangements will have been made to evacuate the passengers and return the aircraft to its original status. 
The drone aircraft, meanwhile, will continue to fly the filed flight plan. When over Cuba, the drone will be transmitting on the international distress frequency a Mayday message, stating he is under attack by a Cuban MiG aircraft. The transmission will be interrupted by destruction of the aircraft, which will be triggered by radio signal. It is possible to create an incident which will make it appear that communist Cuban MiGs have destroyed a United States Air Force aircraft over international waters in an unprovoked attack. At precisely the same time that aircraft was presumably shot down, a submarine or small surface craft would disperse F-101 parts, parachute, etc. at approximately 15 to 20 miles off the Cuban coast and depart. The pilots returning to Homestead would have a true story as far as they knew. Search ships and aircraft could be dispatched and parts of aircraft found. So, you know, we shouldn't think that certain people within the U.S. government can't plant evidence at staged terror attacks to make you and me and the news media believe that something actually happened or that it happened a particular way. That concludes the Operation Northwoods examination. Let's move on.